It's my honor to introduce one such entrepreneur and our keynote speaker, Jay Vijayan, founder and CEO of Techion Corp. Prior to founding Techion in 2016, Jay was the Chief Information Officer of Tesla Motors. This session will be moderated by Eric Wei, Managing Director of Advent International Corporation, one of the largest global private equity investors. In the next 30 minutes, we expect to hear how Jay and his team reimagined a giant asleep at the wheel automotive retail and created a hyper growth unicorn in just four years. Full disclaimer, both Advent International and Blue Point Ventures are investors in Techion. With that, take it away, Eric, all yours. And it's been a pleasure to join that journey as, as Advent in the past year. So Jay, the first question really is, help the audience here as they're thinking through their entrepreneurship journey at that idea stage when you figured out day zero how you wanted this to, to land on starting Techion. Thank you, Eric. First of all, I want to uh, thank um, the Tycon organizers. It's glad to be um, back in Tycon after five years. I think I did it in 2015, maybe six years. Um, it's, it's been a great, uh, great pleasure being here. And thank you, Eric and Sandeep, for being investors in Techion. So now, uh, Eric, going back to your question, see the, um, I had a, uh, the, the vision is, was much, much bigger. The way we started, I would say, which I feel made a lot of sense is when we chose the market, the product market fit, when typically being called in the industry, right, is start with a customer. So that's how uh, we started at Techion. So basically, there was a bigger vision. We wanted to start with an industry vertical, which is automotive and automotive retail. And we, the first thing I did and uh, my team did was search for who, who are our ideal customers? How do we learn from them? And um, that's how we started. So just rewinding a little bit back, um, my experience from um, the technology world being in high tech, and coming into automotive, combining the vertical of you know technology and automotive, um, had 15 plus years first in the high tech world in enterprise software, SaaS software, and then finally the Tesla was my first introduction into automotive. So combining that experience of high tech software and then looking at what we were able to do at Tesla from ground up on a clean slate in many ways. Of course, it was hard work and a lot of things that we had to build. When I looked at the industry itself, um, which is the automotive industry and automotive um, retail specifically, which is one of the largest consumer industries in the world with 4% uh, of US GDP and somewhere around trillion dollars transacted in the automotive industry. I felt there was a huge gap for us to fill in. There is a um, real need for transformation that hasn't happened for 50 years. So that's kind of the premise and the idea. How do we approach it? Because it's a very complex, long journey. I knew that. And there are two things I think we did right going back. Understanding the barriers, understanding the complexity. We didn't go in completely thinking like, oh, everything is going to be great. You know, We're going to just go build a great software and then go sell to everyone. Um, there was a massive amount of barriers that were created in the industry um, for a long time. Um, there are so many things that we will touch probably in following our conversation. For the year one, we said, okay, let, me, let us understand what are our customer problems. So we went and found, we searched for automotive um, you know, uh, dealership, which is our retail, is our customer, and OEMs who do retail network. Um, my, in my network, we went through searching for who are the right people and how, how many people we can talk to, to gather about the problems. Did we understand it right? So that's exactly how we went about the first year. First year was getting a, you know, customer, getting their commitment. We were lucky. I should say it didn't happen easy. We had to go through a lot of discussions. Of course, a lot of pitch about the vision, why this makes sense, but the validation the glimpse of the validation was there from the beginning. So we got a dealer group from day one, literally, who gave us full space about um, exploring, talking to their staff, understanding everything. And then we also had connections to some of the OEMs. Again, that took several pitches, knocking doors after doors after doors, but right thing to do. 
then it's trial and error building the platform. Uh, so the, that was pretty much our first year, Eric, starting from idea, the first year of what we were uh, trying to do at Techia. Yeah, that's great. And I think one of the, the most amazing origin stories with Jay and, and Techion is you actually tried this at Tesla too. So you, you understood some of the problems at Tesla. And then um, in the first year, like you said, a lot of trial and error from a, from a product standpoint. Another really cool thing that Jay did was they, you actually bought a dealership at some point, right? To, as another test bed. So I think it just speaks to the, um, you know, kind of product duration. And, you know, I think from, from our perspective, one thing that was clear is, the product market fit was clear. It was a big market with a big need. It's really just Jay's team and the engineering capabilities of, of how you approach it was, was, was really critical. Maybe you can share a little bit, Jay, when you think about year one to year two, after you had a clear definition of the product, you know, initial betas, um, what are some of the major focus and challenges from year one to year two? Yeah. So one, I, again, for me, uh, being in the, um, have been in the corporate world. I was associated with startups only in the sense of investing, right? So I invest um, through uh, many funds, uh, Sandeep's uh, Blue Point as well as one of them. And Eric, thank you again. We started doing investing with Advent. But outside of that, uh, you know, being in the center is very different. So we went the journey. There's so much, you know, learning. You have to go through, I mean, I would definitely say being in high growth companies like VMware right during the peak growth periods at Tesla helped learn a lot of things. Definitely there were more unique learning. So I would say challenges um, are two big areas. So one, literally you have to keep pitching after pitching after you never as an entrepreneur, you should never get tired about pitching your idea. Right. And you should also um, be, be, seen rejection, some people were like many, many in the early days itself, people said like, why, why would you do this, right? Not everyone encouraged because so many failures, why would you want to boil the ocean? There are different types of advices from people, you know, investors, um, all with probably right intentions, but at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, you are the only one who knows all the dots, how all the dots are connected. You may or may not articulate how everything is connected because they may not get it from an um, um, uh, investor or whoever you're talking to. So the first is I would say tuning and tuning, getting your pitch. When I say pitch, the reality is you have to truly believe as an entrepreneur what you are. You cannot do something just for the sake of pitching. Um, that only goes certain way and you know, um, in, every, people will read into it over a period of time, especially experienced investors would say, okay, what are you what you are faking in terms of uh, just, you know, all the buzzwords versus what you really are passionate about solving. So as a, as an entrepreneur, first, you have to be passionate and believe that you're solving the right problem. Then your team will automatically start believing if you are passionate and you believe in it and you work towards it, then yes. So the pitching and taking some early, you know, feedback, blunt feedback, rejections in terms of like, okay, you shouldn't be doing this. Why are you doing this? The barriers and many people pointed how many companies failed. In fact, some of our investors with the right intention, they believed in us, but they also said, you know, go talk to these companies which have failed. They spent like, you know, $20 million. They failed. Why did they fail? So learning is a big piece. Uh, pitching again and again and again to get validation. Second part is the team which is very important, team and culture. When you build, or when I, when we started building that, that was the tough part, right? Because um, you have only an idea. Um, you have to hire top talent. And um, not all the time you get the alignment first. Um, I was lucky to have a few core people whom I have worked with for a long time to be part of the core team from very early days. But we had to hire a great engineering team and product team and design team and all of those. So we had multiple challenges. I'd say the second is putting together the right team for you know, bringing that vision to reality. And we made some mistakes. Um, I think the first year was both from the product perspective and for one, I would say probably one and two, both a lot of uh, you know, like core building platform, throwing it away, you know, rebuilding it. And teams as well. We had some churn in team. Um, we, we realized that we didn't hire the right people to where we need to get to, right? Because as an entrepreneur, that's the thing. It's a very sensitive, tough thing to do. 
but you have to do it's like you're a, you're a captain of the ship right like it could be a small ship whether you sink the whole ship or you have to let a few people down so that others can survive the the ship itself can survive or a boat whatever you call it as right but, so those tough decisions were i would say the two big challenges that we went through one is pitching and getting validation for the vision second is um, getting the right team uh, in place i think those are the two things that i would say um, that we we solved in the first two years i think those are great uh, lessons that probably over, every entrepreneur that gets to your stage goes through and i think that those the that first one in particular the deep seated passion and commitment right because when you say pitch it's not just pitching investors you got to pitch to your family you got to pitch to your employees you got to pitch to your customers and you're you're always going to get naysayers and to have that that commitment that resilience to really push through it, like you said you can't fake it you truly have to believe what you're doing is your life's work and the amount of energy and commitment to do so is it it really requires that that level of it um and so that, you know that probably goes back to the the zero part is really hone in on idea where you truly understand the product market fit you had a you had an ability given your tesla seat to really deeply understand the market you didn't just kind of try to create a business to create it you saw a need you you understood it and you know as a result you really understand how, um the the how broken it is and and why you're solving it um which i think is powerful and i think the second part you're talking about around the team and how important it is obviously businesses a technology business is all about the product and the people right fundamentally it's product and people and the team part uh you know i think it's also something once you bring on capital once you have customers it's hard to actually admit that maybe you need to reset right and i think that's also a great lesson is trying to find that balance of when do you pivot either business model or your team and that trade off of lost time lost momentum um but there's going to be times in the journey where you're going to have to make that decision and it sounds like you know for you a year one year two you 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 did that and um you know to to make the company stronger and so um uh, you know commend you for making those hard decisions right <laughs> and thank you we have to we have to yeah go through and and those are always tough sometimes you have to you will have a lot of self doubts in doing some of these things asking are we doing the right decision but you know one thing i would say in my you know prior journey as well as now you're not going to be as an entrepreneur you're going to one take that responsibility seriously because your your decisions are going to impact not just you um so many people your team and everything but at the same time it's also important to realize that you have to make decision you have to make decision you 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 have to fail if you have to fail you have to fail quickly and move on if you don't make decision just if those responsibilities weigh on your shoulders and you just you know delay the decisions that is even a bigger problem so you you have to make decisions and i'm not saying i made all the right decisions but the key is if the decisions i made did did they make the right impact for the company at the right phase we were in i think they did that's the bottom line for us we're going to make mistakes as long as we make less mistakes and correct quickly rather than <clears throat> making too many mistakes without realizing <clears throat> and then um, that becoming a bigger problem so that i think fortunately i should say and it's a constant learning we have to keep that uh, our <clears throat> eyes and ears open and really focus continue to align and focus on the value that we are bringing to starting with our customers i think that's kind of the number one then it's our um, employees then investors i think it all can be aligned and balanced i think that focus will have to be there all, always So what um before we go to year 2 to 3 a little bit off script from what we talked about but just I think it's been an interesting discussion is in this whole journey what was it one example where you thought oh maybe this won't work when you really started developing doubt and then one example where you're like okay this is going to work what are what are, what are some of the key points in the journey where yeah, I'll guys- tell you um yeah, there are, there are uh... few areas it was uh, not a easy decision right so one as you know startup uh, eric you know this you know deeply and we have a lot of entrepreneurs listening it's a constant decision making you have to do because there are so many variables um i know today's environment is great great for everyone because a lot of capital and everything but it was not the same like you know 3 4 years ago 
I mean, you still have to be very conscious how much money you burn. You can move higher fast and just go develop very quickly because you don't know how many customers are going to buy. You're going to run out of money quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's so many levers which are all interconnected. So you have to keep your um, um, always that focus on. One of the important decisions we went through is when we initially started building the platform, constantly I kept hearing from people why would you want to do this? This is extremely complex. So many failures. Why are you doing this? So um, for the right reasons, even our board members said, like, Jake, should you just take a look because speed to market is important. Take a look, for example, accounting. Why do you want to build accounting? Because there are so many things that is going to go wrong in the platform itself. He said, like, why do you, can you partner with someone? I said, yes, maybe let's look at it, right? Because we have to genuinely go look at it. We said speed to market, it might improve. So we may go to market with a full platform if we have a good partnership instead of building accounting. Because accounting is, even though it's basics, but you have to get the logic rules, regular, everything. There are so many regulations. It involves dollars, cents. Everything has to be accurate. So many states, so many counties, so many cities. Hmm. So too many things that could go wrong. And they said, you know, you, you need to go. So I started going and looking at talking to um, companies to say, who are the right partners um, in outside of automotive itself? So we spoke to a few companies that were up and coming, small business companies, large business companies. Unfortunately, after a lot of due diligence, we came to a conclusion that it's not, there's no single solution that we could, we could really partner with and deliver. The other option was going and integrating with legacy players, which is even more complex because that's the problem we are trying to solve. Um, so why would we want to do that? So it was a tough decision and we, I, I really had a lot of doubts to say, the problem is it's not about whether we are going to develop, but when we take it, how much time it's going to take to really deliver that to the market, right? It's, you can't because as you know, accounting is like companies like Oracle and um, you know, SAP have been doing it for decades. Um, it took a long time even for those companies because I, I was there um, at Oracle long, long ago in uh, you know, 1999 to 2007. But anyway, the point is we made that decision and it was, um, it was a tough, scary decision uh, because as you know, startup, we burn, keep burning capital yeah. as well. Uh, but I think I should give kudos to my team. They absolutely, absolutely, um, you know, did a phenomenal job deliver. And we blew away everyone, every one of our partners, investors, even the large, um, you know, um, automobile manufacturers who are our partners. Uh, everyone was blown away how quickly, how great a platform. I have to give credit to my team and all of our partners who we work with. Um, it was a it was a great outcome from that perspective. So that was uh, one decision where um, really there were a lot of doubts, but we I think we made the right decision for the product for the company. We took the heavy lifting because we believe so much this is the right value, and I can tell you it brought in the value what we thought and a lot more a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, maybe thinking about what I would just say you know, that obviously. Most companies, there's forks in the road, decisions like that. And it's always a straight off, like you said, burn more, slower time to market, but building it the right way. And it's always that hard decision of that trade off. But exactly. I think fundamentally, in technology businesses, if you build it the right way over the long term, it's it's generally the right right decision. Um, so, and then, yeah, please share the, the other example where, where, you, where you realize. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, about the second example, right? So you're talking about uh, something, a decision we took that didn't didn't go as well as what we thought, correct? Is that? Well, I was, well, one where like you just had doubt and then one where like, okay, this proof point, this vision that you had, this is the first time, okay, a moment where like, okay, Technion's going to work, right? All the effort, one, just one example, maybe a, a customer. Yeah, um, I would say you know, uh, the proof points where, um, you know, this is where I feel for every customer, this is validation. You can always, as an entrepreneur, as a team, you're going to be, you're going to be biased. You're going to be biased. It's your baby. So you're going to always be biased. Mm -hmm. So the, the proof point for me is such a complex thing. When you see things work live in a customer environment, when customers, your, your customers feel more than anyone, it's your customers. I don't think sometimes investors may also be biased one way or the other because they, they, they committed and put capital in it. It comes down to customers. So for me, the first moment was when we 
launched our first large uh, customer, a dealership in Connecticut. Um, I was there for the launch and everything. So how we went about it, how the first day, of course, it's nervous. Uh, you, you will be nervous looking at, because the whole operation, ours is a mission critical system. It's not like, you know, something like a, a chat system. I mean, no, no offense. It's not like a chat where someone can chat and then, you know, turn it off or if it doesn't work, that's fine, right? So this is a mission critical system. They run their business, everything from selling cars to servicing cars to uh, running their accounting operations has to go through every cent goes through this, their website ordering. So it was a tough one. So for me, the validation was when a customer feels, wow, okay, this is awesome. Yes, there is going to be issues. You're going to be, so you have to kind of filter some of these things and see bigger picture. Okay, did we achieve the bigger picture? So there was definitely a lot of wow factors. Of course, we went through journey, corrections, bugs, fixes, but bottom line, I think that was the first glimpse the, the second, I would say, is uh, scaling. When you build, we are in a place where we have customers, uh, you know, in uh, 40 states. So the second glimpse was not in now, but um, like six months ago, how are we going to scale? Yes, we did this in, in one um, dealership and we had a partnership with one of the largest North American OEM, which is General Motors. Um, so how do we scale this? Truly. So strategically, even in our pilots, we placed it in three parts, West Coast, East Coast, and South of the country. That way, again, some of these hard decisions, taking it early, you always have a doubt, do you have to go this complex? But the problem is when you go too easy early, my view is you get shocked later when complexities hit you. So you have to plan for what complexities you do, but take a smaller portion of it, but try it out. That's how Strategically, I should thank our partners um, in multiple ways as well. Uh, some of the partners are, for the right reasons, they want validation as well. So they pushed us to do the right thing. And we would have done it also in the right way because we always plan for what's the bigger picture coming. So how do you take the complexity? So that was the second one. So I would say the first one is the product works. And our customers say, wow, okay, you guys have done it. The second piece is like, Okay, you get a glimpse of the scale itself. Okay, now you know you can scale, but you have to work for it. So those are the two moments, I would say, Eric, this uh, yeah. I would say very gratifying yeah. moment for all the hard work. Yeah, and given what you saw at VMware and Tesla, you understand the scale you need to build for the future. So Absolutely. that would be a good, good roadmap. Great. Um, and then maybe the final step is, uh, you know, kind of achieving that, that fourth year I guess, you know, the common nomenclature is unicorn status. I mean, I tend to focus less on the, the valuation, but more the, yeah, exactly. the business scale and the progress. But like in, that, in the past year, what are what, what are some of the reflections you've had um, achieving that and what, what it required to get there in that, that final step? Yeah. Uh, first, of all, first of all, thank you, Eric. And uh, I think um, for uh, investing in us and really giving that unicorn uh, status to us last year in uh, July, officially, we closed the round. Uh, definitely a proud moment. But I, I go with your philosophy internally also. That's how we speak. It's a, definitely a big morale booster for the team to say, okay, all the hard work we have put in, okay, we are, it's valued. So that billion dollar value is absolutely, it's an awesome thing. But I also tell my team internally, we will be and we should be more proud when we are a billion dollar in revenue, right? When we generate money, that's when you need to be more proud about this. So yes, valuation is, is a great thing. But at the same time, I also feel there is a lot more responsibility on us to deliver. So that gave us, uh, I think one of the other things I feel we did right is timing um, the product and our announcements, even we, we were in stealth mode. And I think Sandeep uh, knows this, he was a seed investor. There are many people ask like, why stealth? Why so long? Why in stealth? Why can't you go do some marketing? You may get some customers. So it's like we um, waited for the right timing. There are multiple reasons. Um, we want to do, make sure that the product works. So we want the validation to be really strong. We want, don't want to give edge to the competition or you know visibility that uh, this is coming, right? We want to make sure that we get the base right, the product, the validation, get it right. And I want the product and our customers to product to speak for itself and customers to speak for us. Mm -hmm. That's the timing we were waiting. And I think the timing absolutely aligned with our uh, unicorn uh, valuation. 
and that's when we completely came out you know full steam and i think everything we did the patients paid all the hard work paid now our customers are talking about us in social media and that that's the ultimate thing for an entrepreneur so customers are passionate new customers who see the product existing customers who see i think people can go and see on our website we have multiple testimonials and then our partners large partners i mean like general motors uh, there was a press release announcement about the partnership how their ev um selling platform um of the future is going to be powered by techion so absolutely thrilling very gratifying to see that vision has come to life and it's all now the hard work and still it's it's hard work it's about scaling nothing comes easy so we are focused heavily on how do we scale how do we you know make sure we take the right steps put the right structure right process and then continue to bring the same value as we scale as a company from a billion dollar to 10 billion dollar to 50 billion dollar and then um more yeah so i think the other part too is everyone here understands how terrible the car buying experience is in the us and globally and a big part of the reason is these legacy systems and so to me what is so gratifying to be part of this journey and what i'm so proud of what techion has built um and will continue to build this is just finally making the experience better for everyone involved the consumers deserve better the dealers deserve better and the oems and you're you're helping make that happen so in the final 2 minutes jace like what's the what's the next two you know five years for for techion yeah i'd say um um scale of oh, in five years since you asked we want to be the number one um retail software in automotive for automotive retail um in market share um in the number of customers number of cars that go through in terms of uh, you know transaction really car buying servicing uh, we want to be number one for the right reasons not to just dominate the market because we deliver the, the best experience for vehicle buying vehicle servicing consumer engagement for our customers who are dealers and automotive um, retail uh, network and the OEM uh, the manufacturers as well so um i think that's the bigger picture goal i think we will take interim you know steps in terms of scaling we have numbers and targets ipo is one of the uh, you know outcomes not the end goal for any means um that is something we will time it properly whenever the time is right um i think we have a great business that we are building i think there's a great opportunity ahead of us great and thank you for being part of that well thank you for letting us be part of it we are excited to help out any way we can and um you know it's just it's really incredible what you and the team the commitment you have to to the industry and the business so um appreciate all the hard work and look forward to watch the next 5 years evolve thank you eric thank you everyone well thank you uh jay and eric for those key insights what a wonderful session uh eric um <laughs> it took 4 years before i could talk about it jay kept it so stealth for so long uh but you know if i were to summarize this session i think jay uh the four things that i learned uh was a understand your market drivers b get validation early by focusing on product market fit and never tire of pitching uh and uh, c put together the right team to bring vision to reality and then if i could summarize the last part is make sure product works get customer wow and plan early for scale so that said